cable and everything. Mm -hmm. Are you guys seeing and hearing us? Hello, anyone? Seems it is frozen, Steph. Kate is saying that it oh. is uh, just... Uh... Oh. Is it streaming at all? Or are we just frozen? I think frozen? now we're here. Hello, hello. Can anyone see us? Hello. Hello. Excellent. Hi, everyone. We just had a little technical issue that I don't know what it was. My side still says poor connection, even though I'm plugged in by Ethernet on a gigabit connection. It thinks that we have a ball connection. So, hi everyone. Hope you had a great week. I've had a great week. Just the last two minutes kind of went a bit haywire. How are you, <laughs> Stephanie? You look freezing cold. I am doing pretty good. Well, I've, I've just been working a lot. Work, 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 work. I actually, I have tea today. It is uh, cinnamon and vanilla oh. herbal tea. Herbal. Yeah. I love With that. some sugar in it because... Yeah, the sweetness. Um, but yeah, like everything's been going pretty well. Just been like super busy revamping um, my website for like art school dropouts tutorial series on how to produce fight scenes, and also um, a new merch just dropped for us that Joy made, and it's called Steph at Work, and it's like super cute. I think we're gonna buy it, but it's weird because it's just. It's a shirt of me at work. And it, I don't know, it's adorable. I like it. You're going to buy and wear a shirt of yourself at work whilst you work? Yes. That's the plan. That's odd. But great. <laughs> pop, pop a link so <laughs> folks can see it. A um, oh. couple of things to run through first, folks. Next week's theme. So this week we had 26 entries and we're going to go through all of them for the behind the scenes uh, theme. Uh, which is low. So I have made next week's theme something I hope more open, which is reflection or reflections. So it could be, a, you know, someone being shot in a mirror or a window or a, a city reflected in a puddle. It could be somebody looking back in contemplation, that kind of uh, reflection. So interpret it broadly and our show is actually going to be Saturday of next week, not the Friday. So you have until the 5th to get that shot in and we'll be giving away the same kind of prizes. I chose the theme behind the scenes for this week because I have my new start to finish photo series on Art Nude Portraiture. And that takes you along on a bunch of different uh, Art Nude Portrait shoots where you see all the way through from as we greet the model, go through the concepts, all the posing, all the shooting, all the outfit selection, some are lingerie, some are implied, some are full nude. And that sale is actually ending this Sunday, so don't miss out if you guys want to get in on that. Wait, did you choose Reflection because uh, Mulan's coming out on Disney Plus? Wow, what's, like the, the what's, the, September. what's the link between that and Reflection? Have you never seen Mulan? Nope. There's a song called Reflection. Nope. Tonight I'm having Pils and Urkel. Thank you to uh, someone on Instagram who suggested that. Uh, I forget who it was. And to uh, a friend who I met and worked with in Japan who said, any IPA, just choose a good looking one. So I chose Main Beer Company Woods and Water. And it says on it, do what's right. I think that's great. Do what's right. Be a man. Um, and apparently what's right <laughs> is that I should go watch Mulan. So, I promise you, Steph, once I see my godchild and need to watch a kid's movie with him, I will load that one right up. Please. Pilsner Urkel for the win. I love this. Check beer. Okay, so thank you again. Yes, uh, Sean said nice bottle opener. This is my lobster bottle opener. And actually, Jennifer gave us this, right? Eh, my wife can't hear me. Pretty sure my godson's mother <laughs> gave us this. Um, so let's take a look. Oh, so Chris is asking any new photos for sale from your website, Steph. I'll get you some from our last shoots, maybe... 
uh, we can do some kind of a share on like the bathtub one or something. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, we keep for I keep forgetting yeah. to talk to you about that. I mean, we're so busy. It's it's fine. But yeah, like we could throw some stuff up there. That'd be cool. Cheers, everyone. Let's jump in and take a look at some first images. If you have questions, uh, hashtag if it's for Ask Matt or Ask Steph, and Yobo or Juan will um, send me them through, and we'll come back and answer some of those. So let's take a look at some pictures. This first one from Aaron Shuso. Hi, Aaron Shuso. Are you in the room? Um, so I knew we would get some shots like this. You were lucky to have a name that starts with a double A, so you're always at the start of the list. Um, but I'll tell the viewers now, we got a lot of shots that are this kind of thing. A photographer with a model then pulled back to see the lights. So you're gonna to have to have done something great to really stand out among the crowd. And to be honest, I think this one is one of the better ones. It's, um, I feel like you can see the image here, although the light, it will be, you're kind of losing a lot of light there. But anyway, if he's trying to just catch her head and shoulders, um, I think, you know, this is a behind the scenes shot, so a wide shot is fine. It doesn't need to replicate or be in tight like the photographer's actual shot might have been. But I don't think the, the foreground really adds a whole lot. You could bring it in and in something around that, and that probably already makes it a bit uh, stronger. Looks like you've gone through maybe and done some dehaze on her, or maybe it's just that the separation to the mist of the water in the background was naturally in the shot. But I think this one works quite well. Stephanie, what do you think? Did the model and photographer coordinate on wardrobe because you guys are wearing the same blue? Uh -huh. Well, that makes it much easier if you're There's doing... Like extra thought. If you're using the HSL sliders and you want to play with their outfits at the same level, that's very handy. Um, um, but, I mean, I personally love behind-the-scenes photos, especially for, like, film productions. And it's always like nice to know, oh, okay, how did they get the shot? And, and I think this really... Yeah, yeah, agree. And I should say, whilst we had a lot of these kind of um, images entered, I do actually recommend when you're, especially if you're trying new lighting techniques, to do exactly this and pull back and get a shot of your own lights. Because uh, you might find a month later you go back and say out of these four different setups, I really like this one the best, but was it this or that light source on which side and was it higher or lower in this one rather than the previous one? So if you have loved this shot, step back or zoom out, get the full lighting set up. It's good just as a, a reference for yourself. Um, and it can also be a great shot, uh, you know, in this case, Aaron shooting the other photographer, a shot for the photographer. Having said that, and I don't know that we had any entered, the other vantage point is probably the better one. If you get the photographer or at least a side one, so you see the photographer and the model, here it's an interesting behind the scenes shot for the model, but a butt shot for the photographer. <laughs> or the tourist view as we call it. Uh, this one from Alexi Mateo. This will sound bizarre, but I feel like if Alexi's in the room, did I meet you at this photo shoot? This was in 2016. I was <laughs> in, I think it was the Philippines, at a hotel doing a job for the Philippines Tourism Bureau. And we saw lights flashing and I went in and there was a bunch of guys shooting a woman for like their equivalent of FHM magazine or something. And then it turns out they followed me and we had a great chat. And this looks so familiar. It could just be because this is a fairly familiar kind of a shoot, but it really reminds me of that. So, and it's around the right time period. So Alexi, if we met in the Philippines and this was you entering it, then that's cool. And thanks for entering it. Um, <laughs> on this one, so again, whether this was intentional or not, this is helpful to know, well, I'm getting, well, I don't know. Sometimes when you're doing a behind the scenes like this, if the person shooting also had a trigger for the flashes, you could have been triggering it. Otherwise, you've just managed to capture it at the same time the photographer of the model uh, let his shutter open. 
but it looks like you just got one of the three umbrellas actually working here. Um, yeah, and I note in the background, motorcycle helmets, which is a theme we're going to circle back to in just a second. What do you think, Steph? I mean, just to tie into the whole behind the scenes, look, I feel like it's one of those types of images that you don't have to clean up. The messier it is, you just get a better idea of what the scene actually looks like. Usually I'll be like, oh, maybe you should cut out huh. the chandelier that's in the corner and all of that stuff. But it's nice to know the space that you guys were working with create the shot. I'll have to try and find that. Maybe whilst we're in a QA and a and Steph's answering, I'll search my email. When I did a series of family and friend portraits that I've mentioned here and there to you guys, I did one for a couple that were actually photographers as well, who actually shot my wedding for me. And their portrait was, I did a wide shot that showed all the shit in the frame of they just had a new baby and then we had the cables for the lights running around <laughs> and the stuff on the floor and they're both wearing slippers and da 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 da. Um, and then I put kind of like a border around it so we had all of the mess was grayed out but there and then in the center was color and that was the actual shot where they're wearing their best clothes and it's just the sofa and the clean background but they're just inches out of frame is like an open <laughs> loaf of bread on the counter and this that and the other to show the behind the scenes and the real one. I just thought of that when you said it's a kind of shot you don't need to clean up. So I'll see if I can find that one. Mm -hmm. um, Kate, if you're gonna try and search for that, it was the shot of Nancy and Alex. Um, Cassidy Collins. Now, I think Cassidy said he took this at one of my workshops and given the yep, amount- Yep, because that's me. <laughs> oh, is it? Ha! I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't even realize. I thought, why is yeah, that model like, wearing a- like, <laughs> A helmet. I'm like, that's a bit I was like, odd. Oh, that's me. <laughs> and then read the email, <laughs> and <laughs> sorry, dude. Um, I didn't even. Okay, so he said it was in LA. I've done a few in LA, so it was the most recent one. Uh, so yeah. I still don't know if I was there on that set. I don't remember someone. I don't someone. I don't remember Steph putting the head the helmet on. But that's a great way to not get punched in the face, huh? Oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty safe wearing a helmet and trying to hit somebody. Um, I remember, well, not this particular shot, but the he was trying to replicate a shot where it was a shot through the visor of the helmet. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so that, I think that was it. Um, yeah. And then these were just kind of fun extra things. <laughs> If you had at that stage been wearing your little um, red bracelet that you've been wearing lately, I might have, or the jade necklace, I probably would have recognized it, but I, yeah, I totally spaced. So cool. Thanks for entering, Cassidy. <laughs> um, this one from Charles Young. Now he titled it Chicago Welder, but the email did say behind the scenes. So, I mean, I feel like this is kind of more the shot than a behind the scenes, but again, I guess. Uh, you don't see the girder or whatever it is being prepared. So in that sense, it's a preparation shot. So it's a, a behind the scenes. Um, I'll be honest, it's a really difficult one because the scene is underexposed, but you don't want to overexpose it to the, well, it already has. It's really difficult to not blow out the brightest part of the scene. You could potentially try to just bring up your shadows to bring to boost the guy up, but, um, there, there is going to be a limit to it. Um, the sparks are cool. Play with your shutter speed to get different amounts of movement in there. And then, you know, it's easier said than done. But if you could clean up the shot a little bit, I think it could have been maybe more dramatic. And I know you don't want to get um, molten whatever metal on the front of your lens. But uh, in closer shot, wide angle would be hectic. But be careful. Uh, any thoughts, Steph? Have you ever used an angle grinder? Is that an angle grinder or a welder? No. That's a welder. Have you ever used a welder? I have not. Um, I actually was cast in a commercial for like, I guess a construction video thing. Um, but since it was like a paid job and it was a commercial, all I ended up having to do was like walk in the foreground and they're like, okay, you're wrapped. And then everybody else had to stay and pretend to be able to do all of this stuff and carrying bags of equipment. So what and like was all the on the, um, 
what was on the casting sheet? Woman who can walk. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm applying for oh, this no. one. Oh, <laughs> no. It was... Because it was supposed to be like uh, a commercial for like a school, like a university that had a program. And part of the program was like students could go and actually like intern and like shadow at a welding facility, I guess. So they were looking for students. But since I got there, um, I guess they liked the boots that I had on. And they're like, can you just walk in the foreground? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And they're like, you know what? You're wrapped. You're good. I was like, sweet. <laughs> I got paid. And all I had to do was walk in front. Other people, they're carrying bags of sand just to be in this video. And I'm just like, yeah. Nice. Um, <laughs> guys, it is not a uh, grinder reminder. The file name is Chicago Welder. So it's some form of welder. Uh, it almost looks like a torch for cutting metal, but it's definitely not a grinder. Um, Sweet job. I would like some of those jobs. I know how to walk. Well, I, f yeah. I fall sometimes, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, Chris Dellinger, that is an epic car. It has one wow. of my favorite products in there, WD-40. I'm sure I've told this story before. Do you know how WD-40 got its name, Steph? No, tell me. <laughs> it's just the nice little don't give up story. And it could be bullshit. I've never actually checked. But <laughs> anyway, use it as motivation. But <laughs> what I heard was the guy developing it started with his trials with WD-1. And it took 39 failures to create WD-40. And that was the product that now is used all around the world and costs, you know, is worth millions, millions, millions. Uh, so Works. there you go. Work, 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 work. Okay, so I think this is... Hmm. It definitely, you know, shows all of the action and it's a behind the scenes shot that most people don't get unless you're in a pit thing. And actually, I don't even know what your vantage point is here. So it does feel really an insider type image. Um, I just don't feel we like if you had someone clearly in there working on the car or a profile on the car or the engine or something, I feel like it might be a little bit more engaging as it is here it's kind of a shell and the backs of people even if we had some more face contact might be stronger i think um let's choose a look at one more and then we'll go have a look at some questions because my phone has been dinging like crazy in my ear so that must mean we have some great questions coming in chris del roy oh. behind the scenes at wired up rock rescue attempt 2020 um with the water... I thought that said what up. What up? Um, Chris, oh, I don't know that at, you don't need a copyright and an at, unless I would say, well, if you're going to do that, then maybe put whatever the platform is, unless you're Chris Del Roy on everything, because you'd be surprised how many people aren't on Instagram, aren't on Facebook, but are on whatever, something that I'm not. Um, so I dig the image. I don't get a sense that it's at a rescue other than there's a couple of guys in high vis. I love the streaming shadows, but I do think the shot would have been stronger with the whole car on the left and none of the car on the right. And the shadows streaming towards camera are great, but the top doesn't add a whole lot. So some a crop like that, and it would be better if we had the car and then really crushing those shadows you know, that maybe is more engaging. So the shadows just lead us straight to them and there's no other kind of distractions. Um, and again, the, the rear shot doesn't convey the same kind of action or urgency, I think, as if you see the people's faces. Uh, what do you reckon, Steph? Uh, I, I agree with that. Um, I'm just wondering, like, were there people stuck? Are they okay? Because <laughs> this is just a rescue attempt, so... And especially an attempt. Attempt doesn't mean a success. <laughs> I know. Oh. Um, it was probably a bogged oh, car. Let's assume it was a bogged car and they got it on the second attempt. Uh, let's okay. take a look at some okay. questions. So, <laughs> uh, so I don't think anyone asked this question, but Juan is asking just to be a dick. Um, number one question <laughs> for the day is, 
how much did Sony pay you? And number two, I hope you have that Be Your Alpha shirt and hat ready for your next video. So one, fuck you, buddy. Love hey. you. You're the Shots Sony fired. guy. <laughs> pew, pew. Um, I don't know. Maybe Sony throws around a whole bunch of cash to buy people off, but I just, I haven't seen it. Um, having said that, I have gotten, I have been able to purchase things via Sony at a discounted rate, which is available to all media, basically. But to those dozens of people who asked, is this because Nikon stopped sponsoring you or stopped sending you free stuff or stopped dot, dot, dot. They haven't done any of that stuff ever. Just a FYI. Um, so yes, you're a very funny one. But no, the only people who paid me was KEH for my used gear. And very happy with the decision. Um, and thank you again, Steph and Lucky, for your cameo. You made a very good, loud frat bro, if that's what you were channeling. <laughs> as long as I didn't bother my neighbors, I was like, all right. We did get some comments about the potty it. mouth. <laughs> yeah, that was quite some potty mouth. Um, Andrew has a question for you, Steph. How much improv do you incorporate in your sketches for ASDO? Um, actually quite a bit. It depends on the script and it depends on like, I guess the actor, um, for our web series or like our feature film with, uh, Lester Wynn, who plays like the main bad guy. A lot of his scenes, he improv. And it was so hard to shoot because I'm just holding like the gimbal and I'm shooting and I'm like trying so hard not to shake from laughter because it's not planned. And I'm like, this is, this is gold. Like, it's so funny. Um, I personally like the improv part of like all of this stuff. So that is we the do. difficulty Actually, that just, just if you're laughing, it's going to move? Or is it that by when you say you improv, that's uh, dialogue and interaction, but people still need to hit their physical mm -hmm. marks? Oh, no, like, they just kind of make whatever What about improv whatever in lines fight or... scenes? Because that's no, got to be hard. No, we don't do improv in fight scenes. <laughs> I mean, two... We plan all the fight scenes. Okay, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure two... Yeah. Uh, not to... This is going to sound like a diss. I don't mean it that way. If you had two martial artists actually sparring, it can look cool but then you need to have a plan to be in the right place for the right shots. I got you. I was just thinking in terms of yeah. improv <laughs> in comedy or anything even must be difficult because if people are meant to walk from here to here for the focus puller and everything, it's hard. I've just mm -hmm. been reviewing footage uh, from the, the series that we filmed a couple of weeks ago and looking at the editors had a pretty tough job because I would move from here to the light to here and there and they're trying to like slowly, smoothly move with me because I talked the whole time I'm walking and, you know, that was a fairly limited space and I'm not like punching and kicking except for those couple of times that I had yeah. to bring you back into line. The, yeah, I think the hard part is like um, when obviously two people dialogue and then the one person, we have the one camera on that one person and they're doing the improv, then it's like, okay, we have to somehow get coverage on the other side of the other person. Um, so we need like two cameras to shoot both directions just to kind of like fill in. Um, but I mean, for the most part, we're pretty okay in terms of the content that we have. Um, I actually, I should have just submitted this to you. I have, a, I do have a behind the scenes photo. Yeah, you should. Um, and this was, Jesus, this was like three years ago, but we were shooting um, if you, a uh, short... If you email it or send it to me, I can show it in the video. Okay, hold on. So let's take one more question and then you send me that one. Yeah. Um, Thiago asks, is the Tamron 70 to 200 G1 a good option nowadays or is it better to save more money and buy the G2? That's the tricky thing, you know, the G1 has not gotten any worse. So if you look at a review on it from when it came out, it's all still true. The only difference is the points of reference will have changed and the market has moved on. So yes, the G2 is faster, much better sealed, much better finished, and a, I think a significantly better lens, but the one is still fine and I wouldn't be going into debt 
you know, for the difference. If it's, uh, you know, spend another month and you're able to save that up, then it's probably worth it. But, you know, for some people, an extra couple of hundred dollars is not much. And for some people, that's a really big deal. So I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't stress over the difference between the two if money's tight. Have I been sent something, Stefan Wee? Yes. Um, pick out another question for yourself whilst I download that. Okay. Oh, Let's there you see. are. Look at you. Uh, is that yeah. on your IG? Yeah. Ah, uh, could have just sent me the link. This works, though. So let's... Oh. Work, 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 work. I'm going to just switch to it right now so they can see it because I already have it up. There we go. Oh, so there cool. is Steph risking life and limb and Joey like, yep, that's it. A little bit more to the left. Yeah, pretty Smart much. Guy. I mean, I like shooting, so it's it's fun. Let's. And like Angela's is holding me from behind, and we're oh, trying to Ant? do like a. Ah, okay. Yeah, um, because I had my other friend hold on to me, but he was kind of like <laughs> not really holding on to me, and I'm like, dude, I'm gonna fall. <laughs> I'm like leaning over. Can you just grip it? <laughs> Yeah, I, I would but, feel pretty yeah. safe in Angie's hands, although I might need someone with a bit lower center of gravity if it were me hanging over an edge. Yeah, <laughs> I would have preferred Joey, <laughs> honestly. Uh, we got, what, but it turned out pretty well. Good, and you're here, so that's important. Yeah, um, exactly. You should have had that motorcycle <laughs> helmet. One more question here and we'll jump back. Yeah. Larry Silverman asks... Uh, Matt, I'm guessing that if Canon gets their overheating issue overheating issue resolved, you might go in that direction in perhaps small part because of the ergonomic similarities to Nikon, true or not. Uh, I don't think that the, not to be a contrarian, but I don't think that the Canon EOS R5 ergonomics are that much more similar to Nikon than a latest generation Sony or an SL2 from Leica or a Pan the Panasonic probably has the closest ergonomics. Um, I genuinely don't have an answer. I'm happy to take these questions and you know it'll help me through the process but my process to figure out what gear I'm going to use is it, I'm still I'm in the process of making plans for general plans for the next couple of years and as I build that out and see what my requirements are going to be, some of that may feed into it. And then I also just want to wait and see what do we get announced this year. If the Gen 2 from Nikon comes out, then I'm in a lucky position to be able to try it and maybe try it head to head with other things and see what I like the results of. And, you know, really take a look at the overall system now and where they're going over the next couple of years because you might feel like you see me using different cameras all the time, but I really don't buy and change and all of that kind of thing all the time. So, you know, I'm not looking to buy something and then keep it for a year or two and then change systems again if it's a, a long-term decision. Um, Frankie, can you please let me have your Nikon 10514? Well, thank you for saying <laughs> please. Uh, but KEH already have it and have paid me, so you can contact them if you want to buy my 105 f1.4. So let's um, jump back into the photos. This one from Dennis Demart. Is that you, Dennis? If you're in the room, thanks for submitting so much over the last uh, few months. It's been great to see your work. I love your hibiscus t-shirt. Um, and this- But what about the watch? I was about to say, this is the amount of work that goes into taking a watch photo. Um, it is actually really difficult with the reflections and trying to get reflections where you want them and not where you don't want them and da 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 da. Um, what watch is it? It's a big one. What's that, like an IWC or something? Or a Swatch? Uh, I can't read it. Pulsar, is it? It's a bit low res for me to zoom that far on. Um, I'd be interested to see the final result in like, it looks like it's laid out in some slate and whatnot. Um, cool, I like this. I mean, it may have been a self-portrait. 
It looks like you've added extra light to yourself. There's little, or well, maybe that's just spilling from this snoot, I'm not sure, but there's definitely bands of light on your neck and arm. Um, but I like it. I, if you look at the shot, I think it's actually quite carefully crafted. You've got the, the pulley for the backdrop right on the left of frame. There's really no clutter other than the backdrop in the background. You could include or exclude that just for the sake of tidying it. I would probably just exclude it. Um, and then you've got all of these verticals and stuff that basically do lead your eye into what it is that you're shooting. So I, apart from being a watch whore, I actually quite like that shot. So there we go. Like. Steph? Yeah, I, this is so cool. There's so many lights for a watch. Three. Come on. Four. Three? Four. One, two, three, four. Four. Is that a Nikon camera too? <laughs> that looks like a D500. Beautiful camera. One of the few uh, great Nikons that I never owned but always loved shooting. Um, huh. Juan thought, sorry, Juan thought that, by the way, I'm not being racist by saying his name like that. <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce, uh, correct myself because Juan's background is Peruvian. And one of my Peruvian friends told me that I'm butchering his name and it should be a rolled H, so Juan. Um, and now it's a joke between him and, him and I. Um, Juan thought that BTS was meant to be Korean <laughs> pop star photos. What are you giggling at, oh, Stephanie? Jeez. <laughs> oh, seriously. <laughs> you know he oh, out boy. nerds and pop cultures, even you. Uh, I, I don't even actually listen to them. I just have friends who are just crazy about BTS. Is that who I saw in Japan? Did I send you that picture? We were in Koreatown in Tokyo and there was some Korean boy band and all of these Japanese girls going into meltdown because they were walking through the streets for a photo shoot. Probably. It also happens in the States, apparently. I don't know. I haven't really kept up with K-pop. Yeah. Um, I see great questions coming in. Please uh, keep sending them through, folks. We'll come back after a few more pictures. This one from Jeff Parker. So, I, my godfather, that's twice I'm mentioning godfathers on the show. That's a lot for a, an atheist. Um, my godfather is a cabinet maker, and uh, this just reminds me of his workshop. Um, and his posture reminds me of mine. Come on, buddy, take a, take a chair or something. That's not good for your back. Um, I think it could do with some more contrast. And I pre let's see, uh, what are our settings here? ISO 1600, F2.5, 1 125th. At the possibility of adding more grain, I would like more depth of field. For me, that room is his temple. Having all of his tools blurred out, I think, is a missed opportunity unless you have a really poignant something that you're picking up on there. Um, and, you know, if he was really just moving his arm, maybe having a bigger depth of field but a slower shutter speed to get a bit of movement just in the hand but have his tools in the background could be pretty cool. What do you think, Steph? Do you work with wood? Have you ever sanded? Uh, I mean, helping my mom with like, oh, yeah, property rentals and stuff. Yeah. But I actually really like this photo. I think the bokeh in the back, it's like, it's not clear, but the focus is on him. He's like, the focal point. He's working really hard. I, I don't know. I give it a pick. Good one. I like this one. I'm just gonna star them. So if you if something's like, oh my God, tell me to give it two or three stars, otherwise I'll just one star everything and then we can filter by that at the end. Okay. Ian Knight. Now, I read your email. Thanks for submitting again, Ian. This was taken at an outdoor restaurant in Sri Lanka, a country I'm dying to visit. Um, and he sent a second one just for context or if I was interested, not for the competition that the chef saw him taking the shot and asked him to take a stage portrait. So he did, and that was very nice as well. Um, <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> What's for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks good. 
Well, it looks steamy. I know. So, uh, you know, giving feedback on composition, on how to change a shot when you weren't there is kind of dumb. But if there was the potential, I shot a little lower, so you were looking more along the pots. You could have then potentially stepped to your right, excluded this pole on the left, and had this light behind his hat, which would give him a nice edge light. I think that would next level it. But I think already it's a, it's a nice shot, and it's a candid, mm -hmm. and it's a, you know, it is a behind the scenes. So nicely done. Yeah, I, I like it too. I, I don't think you really need to change much. I would like a higher vantage point so I could see the food, that, but that's just me. No, that's the other option. If you went higher, see into <laughs> the bowls, and then again, you could get the lights up above his hat that way and get them out of the shot. Um, Jeremy. Uh, I, it's a style choice and it's your choice. Uh, but this looks like a, a clip from a video that's been shot in log and not graded because it's so crushed. There's no highlights. There's no <laughs> shadows. And shooting makeup shots is difficult. I think you got the great vantage point here. Just I would either include or completely exclude the makeup artist's face. Your call. But this is the shot you want. So often you see... Uh, this side of the face is being made up and they shoot this side, you're blocking your subject. Having this side made up, you get the context, but you have this side open, especially if that side's already been made up. That's the way to go. You see how well I did that? You'd think I get makeup done all the time. Um, but I personally would <laughs> add some contrast. Not that often, but I do like getting my nails did. Um, mm. What do you think, Steph? We'll do one or two more and then go back to questions. Um, this looks like, this looks like eyelash extensions being added or like eyelashes being done, which is funny because I find that a lot of men usually kind of find it a weird process because it's like, what? It's so foreign. You put the glue on there and you just like put it on the eyelid. And then first question is always like, isn't it heavy? Doesn't it hurt? But, um, I've worn fake eyelashes. It is heavy. It doesn't hurt, but it feels weird for like an hour. And then it feels fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't help but just flutter them all the time. <laughs> well, you probably have built up your eye muscles from wearing them so often. Is that a thing? Can that, is there like eyelid like muscle workouts i don't know whatever drag but queens have these I gigantic this... muscular eyebrows flop 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 <laughs> <laughs> from their big eyelashes <laughs> yeah actually probably um i just think that this is a great photo for any like eyelash extension like business <laughs> if they want to like promote that i i don't know i just think it's it's a good shot i like but it then again either Take... you want to okay so star either you want to if it's for a business get the staff or i would mm -hmm. add a little bit of contrast there and bring it in on your real subject um either way i think it works and you chose the right vantage point you're also with the light which is a great choice anyone else here has ever worn um eyelashes Eyelash. Who in the chat eyelash. is wearing fake eyelashes right now? Um, JH, uh, I saw your name on the email. This is your initials, JH, JNH BTS. Um, it does sound like a government program or something, though, when it's such a long acronym. Um, so this, this is kind of getting the vibe of what I was saying. That So you see books holding down the background, the... Uh, extra cardboard under the kickstand so you don't damage your wood floor, the shit around the model's second pair of shoes just out of frame. This is, for me, I, I'll be honest, I don't think the pose on the model and everything really works, but that's not the shot. But as a BTS showing the real scene of a photo shoot, you would be, well, you're probably not surprised because Steph is just so authentic, but you would, I think you'd still be surprised how unglamorous our shoots often are. How often 
the sexy shot that we share, she was wearing slippers and tracksuit pants or whatever. Like, it's oh, yeah. almost always. What? Uh, I think that's the sexiest shot. Sorry. <laughs> we're all entitled to opinions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think nice work, JN. JNH. Doesn't really roll off the tongue. Now, Mr. Silverman, please explain. Uh, he actually did explain in his email. He said he had, I oh. don't know how staged this was. It looks like there's like spider webs. Was it like a, a Halloween thing? Um, he said this was oh. from memory, San Francisco, two strippers. I don't know if it's an act or what. Um, and he had permission to be there shooting. Um, you know, I, I don't know, it feels a little bit staged, but who knows if you catch any kind of action in process, you can get the moment, you can get a shot that feels a little bit awkward. If I, you know, last time I shot with Johanna, one in three shots I took, she happened to be blinking. It was just the luck of the draw. So I don't know all of that stuff. If this was staged or real, I don't know if it matters. Two things come to mind though. One, I love this woman's eye peeking over the shoulder. That's probably my favorite thing in the shot. But two, if this is behind the scenes, what's the in front of the scenes? Like what's the front story that this is the backstory to? Other than, mm -hmm. for me, this is more of a, a voyeur type shot rather than, which I don't have a problem with, but I think that's different to a behind the scenes per se. What do you think, Steph? And what is that pamphlet no, I, for? I, I agree. Yeah, I was trying to read like the Four Nights, Four Nights. Condor? I don't know. It sounds sexy. I don't though. know. Whatever. <laughs> but honestly, like, I didn't see the eye at first. And then, like, when I did finally see it, it creeps me out. Do you reckon? Oh, like, Jesus, she's looking at me, and I felt so bad. <laughs> like, oh, shoot, I'm sorry for looking. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> the woman on top, do you think that's a tattoo or body paint? It's too vivid. It must be body paint. I don't know. I was trying to like figure that out. This too. was taken on the 28th but, of October, so it is a Halloween thing, I reckon. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Our fan of BTS has instructed me to flip the image so we can check what this is. Okay, so this is this is where a nerd's attention goes in a shot of two women making out. It's to the pamphlet <laughs> to see what <laughs> what it is. Four nights condor, condor. Maybe condor is the act the the dancer's name, and she's coming to town for four oh. nights. Tell Weekend us, Laz. Costume contest. Oh, okay. That's all I got. Dope. All right, let us know, Larry, you yeah. in the room? Probably not. You're at some sexy party, aren't you? Um, <laughs> Matthew, thanks for entering. Great to see your shots. Now, from memory, you like to shoot a lot of ballet dancers, right? So this might be, I don't know if that's you doing her hair. That, that's like wax to hold down little baby hairs, yeah? Mm -hmm. Look at me and my fashion knowledge. I should get that. <laughs> I always have baby hairs flying in every shot. I should really just, just get that. Just go bald. It really helps. You know, nothing's flying anywhere. It's just well, dropping to the ground. I always wondered, because I was curious, like, man, it would be so much easier just to be bald. I could just, like, switch into different wigs. You're not getting no, out not and modeling that hair. much now. Let's start a Steph Shaves Her Head Fund, and you can do it to raise money for charity. And then we can see you with Chrome Dome. Back to this shot. <laughs> um, just the natural light that's falling on her and her lighter skin, her proxy. Oh, it's not actually just natural light. So whatever, the light you have her in, she does comfortably stand out from the frame. I bet that table was way messier, maybe shooting from the other side of the makeup table or along all of the junk on the table might give us more context because I don't think the left of frame really gives us that much extra. Seeing more shit on the table probably would. Like if you saw the shoot where, that I mentioned earlier that Steph and I were doing, uh, we had like basically a room or two worth of outfits and equipment and 
accessories and all this stuff laid out, that actually tells a really cool story. What do you think, Steph, other than you need that wax? Uh, I mean, this is pretty much the iconic, like, okay, I'm getting my hair or makeup done. I'm going to just look at my phone in the meantime, just waiting. <laughs> like, that, you see that at every, like, photo shoot. You see that at, like, runway shows. It's just sitting there and just getting things done. And it's just, the waiting is the hard part, honestly. <laughs> You should write motivational posters. The waiting is the hard part. Um, for those who, uh, all those questions we just raised about Larry shot, Larry is in the chat and answering questions. So if you want to ask yeah. him any questions about his wild hedonistic photography lifestyle, please fire away. And thanks for sending Larry <laughs> and Matthew. Michael Kobe, we'll look at this one then come back to your questions. So please send them in. Um, so I, don't know what this scene is, but I bet if I'm from where you're from, what these women are dressed up for is probably well known, what the emblem is, what the outfit is, what blue and white signifies, and then that has a lot more context. Um, of the shots we have, I actually think this is a really good one. That's so common, checking your makeup on the phone. And I don't think we had other ones like this. And despite it being such a busy scene, our attention does just go to them. This is one where I think the more diffuse the background, the better. What do you think, Steph? One, those lashes tend to get very heavy. Um, oh, are they? Two, what do you mean I, those lashes? Oh, shit, okay. I thought that was like Yeah, they're eyeliner. like the really big ones. They're heavy. They're That's like, like that, um, they have color. That fan that you were using, the peacock feather one. <laughs> mm -hmm, basically, but on your eyelid. <laughs> As you're like blinking, things will actually blow away from you. <laughs> so maybe that's why she's reapplying the glitter. <laughs> um, but it looks like it could be from like a parade, um, a show, maybe a college event. Um, but yeah, this is this is cool. This is like before they have to go and march out and like do whatever performance or whatnot. And this is very behind the scenes, on the spot, candid. I like this one and. <laughs> For me. Star from Steph. And I like your tiny but ineffective hats. So well done, girls. Uh, <laughs> um, let's take a look at some questions. Um, Jim Graves, did you sell your D700 too? Um, I have a D700 in the cupboard right now, but it's not mine. Um, I have that from a loan that I had from KEH for a budgetography episode back in the day and I just hung on to it because I figured, well, I love the camera to be honest, but I also figured that if I'm going to do other budgetography videos, there's no point to send it back and then send it back to me and whatnot, so I still just have it, but I don't own it. I haven't owned a D700 for some time, but it is a phenomenal camera. For the price, it's still a phenomenal camera. You know, if I were just buying a DSLR now, that's not the one I would buy, but I have a very fond place in my heart for that camera. Um, Ernest Chossel, how does glass selection quality uh, for Canon RF lenses enter into your selection process? So it's kind of a loaded question. Selection and quality of lenses for any system will absolutely be a primary concern. Um, yeah, probably more than what lenses, what bodies are on the market right now. That's where the bulk of my money will go is on lenses and bodies, you know, on my current gear schedule, it's usually two to three and a half years they get replaced, whereas lenses, I wouldn't be looking to replace them unless you know something changed so that's going to be a big uh, consideration and certainly the rf lenses are outstanding um delete uh curious about the lack of hype on the long-awaited 70 to 200 s on youtube thoughts i haven't thought about it um that's true uh <laughs> having said that i i didn't get anything from nikon usa they don't they haven't loaned me anything for yonks, but I still normally get the email list that this is now available, 
hoping to get some people to share it. I haven't even been getting that kind of thing. So that could be it. If Nikon's PR company aren't contacting or responsive is more the issue to uh, reviewers or whatever you want to call us, um, then you don't see it. Um, I have, now that I know that it's available to purchase, contacted B&H Photo to see if I can get a Z7 that and the F4 in so I can compare the two of them side by side for you guys. Um, Stephanie, AQ Player 92, yes. 92, oh. what a whippersnapper, asks, how do you get your wardrobe sorted for your shoot? Do you rent or do you have a big wardrobe? Um, it depends on the shoot. If a photographer has like a certain request, I would actually have to go into my wardrobe and see if I already own it. If I don't, then, uh, I kind of, I mean, I could go to Walmart and I just buy it. So they sell and clothes. Return it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So that's one like little hack or, I mean, uh, some photographers, they want to, own the piece of wardrobe as well yeah. like if it's a dress or something they would want to buy it so they could shoot it with like different models that's another option as well um but for the most part i just try to work within my wardrobe i don't really buy a lot of clothes in the first place anyway not really gotcha, gotcha. a big spender <laughs> um funny one here from rudolph do you think weddings will be shorter in the future like the las vegas style due to the canon r5 that's a sick burn Nice one. Wow. Um, the coverage, maybe. That's, that's a serious consideration. You better not um, have someone who's slow to walk down the aisle or you might miss the kiss. Uh, um, um, da, 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 let's choose one more out here. Uh, Rock Thamen. How effective is it to have a 24 to 70 <laughs> and a 16 to 35? I see them paired pretty often. What has been the combo that you found useful? Maybe a 24 to 70 and a wide prime. Uh, a lot of the Air 16 to 35s out there are actually in the past for DSLR world have been F4s and that's been the more common one. And it's often that that's an option people go for rather than the wide wide because they have a flat front filter. That's certainly the case in Nikon world. Um, I haven't owned a uh, quality 16 to 35 myself. I went wide, wide, and then uh, 24 to 70. But long story short, for anyone looking to, you know, should I buy this, should I buy that, go in, take a look at the shots that you've taken over the past year or two, filter by focal lengths, and see what you tend to shoot at. If you don't shoot anything at 20 mil, then you don't need a 16 to 35. You can use the 24 to 70. Um, Jim Graves, looking forward to seeing more budgetography in the near future. I'm looking forward to making it, so great. Um, and a reminder to those who uh, were a little worried at my selling my Nikon equipment, that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop reviewing Nikon or teaching stuff. And I don't know how many tutorials I've shared about photography technique that depended on the camera system I was using anyway. So don't expect any big changes in that regard. Phil Lloyd, doing some ad hoc film scanning here by the looks of it. It looks like the, oh, that's the center column. I was gonna say, it looks like the tripod leg is on the photo. Um, yeah, pretty cool. I, I actually really like the makeshift nature of this. You got the black stuff all laid out to cut down on reflections or or you had some secret plans on the whiteboard that you didn't want us to see. Um, flipping the screen up, <laughs> good for your posture and good for us to see a triple version of the image. Um, yeah, nicely done. Uh, I think this has actually been fairly well manicured uh, intentionally put together as a behind the scenes. And I think, you, yeah, because you've boosted the exposure around the frame here as well. Oh, sorry, you've probably darkened the white wall down and we see that haloing there. So you put a bit of effort in, get, you know, be a bit more careful with your edit. The halo is a bit obvious. But um, yeah, you know, the placement of the phone and everything, nothing's cut off, nothing feels too distracted. Although with the amount of effort you've gone to, you could probably 
probably bring it in just a little like this and get that hot spot off the side of the table like that. Um, what do you think, Steph? How many times have you been asked to do this pose? Not many, if ever, honestly. Plus, that's really hard on the knees. That hurts. Okay, good. I think photographers should also invest in knee pads, just saying. <laughs> Mr. Livingston. Uh, so, comparing this to the shot we had earlier of Chris, I from Chris, sorry, I think this one just with the side profile of the car, as a car nerd, gives me more to kind of delve into. Um, having said that, this is much less of an insider type view. This is an up high position. I kind of love it seeing all of the people with their cameras in the foreground. Um, so it's a really different kind of image, but here still, you know, it's a different vibe. Your one, I think Chris needed to have faces and maybe a bit more of the car. This one with the side of the car, the scene has changed. So it's not that behind the scenes, this is about the fans watching. So I think this perspective actually works quite well. What do you think, Steph? I, I don't drink Red Bull, but I think the design looks really cool. <laughs> That bull like, is look at rippling. that bull. It's so beefy. My God. Did you say that bull is beefy? Give me a break. Yes. Give me a break. <laughs> wow. I didn't. I didn't even realize it until <laughs> after I said it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Randy Tesh. Uh, massive deep underground government research Wait. facility. Is that the real name? Because that's. I, Are we going to get in trouble? For looking at this, I just think it's oh, funny God. if it's called Massive Deep. Um, hmm, I reckon this will work better as a mono, and then we can bring it down so then our eyes more clearly directed down the tunnel like that. Um, and that is Massive Deep, bro. Massive Deep. What do you think? Massive deep. Okay, moving on. Um, Mr. Popper. So, wow, that is a very low light scene for what I think was probably a film shoot, if I am right. Um, this is actually, in a way, it reminds me of what I was just saying about Steph. The wide shot on this to me looks like she's impersonating a bunny, kind of. <laughs> but mm -hmm. not knowing the frame, if this were head and shoulders, then it's just kind of suggestive. And then you see the reality, she's wearing a skirt and sneakers and everything. If it's to mm -hmm. her, you know, her breast and you know, upper stomach, then the hands are in the shot. But you see, this does kind of point out there, there's a shot right here just of face and shoulder, there's a shot of torso, and it's all where this guy's camera is actually cropping the shot that makes the shot. So it's a much cleaner behind the scenes, we're not seeing all of the junk, but I, it kind of does also reinforce that you can get a shot anywhere if you isolate the aspects, low light, window light, and that's also a nice way. There you go. You don't need wax for your baby hairs. You can just use a hairband. Mm hmm And you can wear sweatpants and sneakers. It works. It works. Uh-huh. <laughs> See? Because like this guy, most photographers don't show up in a three-piece suit to the photo shoot. So the model can just have whatever's <laughs> in the camera uh, preened. Nice one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rod Wilkinson. <laughs> um, That's awesome. <laughs> for those people who lie on their um, call sheets about exactly how high, tall they are, <clears throat> this one sounds true. Oh, look at those guilty eyes. I actually was just what? reviewing a video where I had, not Steph, but someone standing on a, a little kitty chair to get them just, you know, the 
the 10 inches higher that I needed to have their reflection in a fireplace mirror in the right place. Um, so yeah, this is part of the reality. She's probably, you know, paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to be the face of some network, but when it comes down to it, she's got her clipboard on the ground and her mic pack tucked in and probably <laughs> wax in her hair and she's standing on a rickety box to get the shot. You gotta do what you gotta do. I'm sure you've been there many times, Steph. We did something like this. Mm -hmm. Like you and I, we did something like this, I think at your old place in Manhattan. Where was that? Was that for a shoot or for video? And video. It was one of the lives, right? Uh, is that when you were um, like insisting on people thinking that you were six foot tall? So every time we stood together, you were on <laughs> six phone books? No, we actually, like, you pull this stool over something and I had to stand on it. I think we were using the... Was that the, like the three um, outfits in sound panel. something, something? Yeah. yeah, I think so. That was actually yeah. a good one. That was fun. Um, yeah. somebody will find Time flies, huh? <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. I was so young. <laughs> well captured. <laughs> well, uh, well captured, Rod. And I like the, also how she pops from the scene but also has this healthy tan light -like glow, which is thanks to the, the light. Uh, Rod, f sorry, Ron Friesen behind the exhibition. Uh, at first, when I saw the small version of this, I thought it would, they were voting booths. Um, I thought so too. I reckon it would just be that much stronger if a couple of the panels, maybe the ones closer to the camera had something hung already. Um, to, you know, it gets that out of the way straight away. You have to kind of search around and think, okay, so the cables are there for them to put the pictures up and whatnot. Um, the blacks are also kind of a little blown out. I would then maybe just, you're going for behind the scenes, so the step ladder is kind of great, but I don't know that upstairs really adds anything to the imagery. So maybe bring I mean, in, uh, I feel like the upstairs just adds that it's an art exhibit because of the art piece that's hanging there. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay, one more and then we'll jump out. So, Mr. Ryan Ho. <sighs> hmm. Uh, where is this? That looks like Japan. You know, well, I think last week we mentioned that a shot had a very Instagram type treatment on it. It's that teal color look to it. But to me, this actually just looks authentically vintage rather than an Instagram filter per se. Maybe it's the fancy little yeah. gloves that he's wearing add to that as well. When I, when I think like something like this, I just think of the movie Train of Busan. Have you seen it? It's the one with ago. the zombies, everybody's stuck ah, no, on no, a no. train. Sorry, I was thinking, no, I haven't seen that one. Um, I've been oh, to Busan, it's though. It's so good. Um, um, so, do you think he's a zombie or about to get eaten? Or Oh, no, he's fine. He's, like, in a closed in case, like, nah, he's, he's good. He's not a zombie. Okay, good to hear. So, good looking out, Ryan. Yeah. Check your six. <laughs> Uh, but I do like the framing and the reflections. <laughs> as weird as it. Oh, uh, yeah. so next one is going to be sand kit, but let's jump out and look at some questions. Uh, uh, uh. Eric Hershey, and then those who replied, are you going Sony or Canon? Photorescent, why not Nikon? Eric. He just sold everything, so I assume he's going elsewhere. Please check the video and you can see my whole thought process. I sold Nikon F-mount DSLR equipment. And from here, I'm not trying to be coy, I could equally likely go to any of the different brands. And I'm not saying SLR is necessarily out of the picture. Um, we'll just see, but I'm not gonna buy back into Nikon DSLR at this stage. Um, Juan is saying that Matt will go Samsung. Um, yes, their, their camera division is thriving, you BTS-loving freak. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Sparky Grover always gets problems towards the end of the session with buffering. Well, we're not at the end, so it can't be an end-related issue. So maybe just refresh it. Um, My money's on Kodak. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you put all your money into their um, cryptocurrency, didn't you? <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> oh, the jokes, the jokes. <laughs> oh, yeah, quick reminder for everyone. Next week's uh, theme is reflections. We haven't said that in a while. so. And Good Ryan thing. Ho's yeah. image had a nice reflection of the handrails, if you notice uh that. Um, Raoul is asking 50 or 85 mil for portraits. Again, I would say look at what you tend to shoot and choose based on that. I'm probably more often for headshot type portraits go 85, 105, but for travel, environmental type stuff, 50 can be great as well. But now, you know, with social distancing, maybe 85 is the new 50. Um, have we been watching Theo? Do you know what Theo is, Steph? Theo? Theo? No. Me either. What's Theo? Let us know. Yeah, what's Theo? Uh, 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 uh. Eric Hershey. Uh, you just came in late to talk shit about cameras and you didn't even see what beer we're having. Come on, bro. Level up. This is a woods and water Indian pale ale. Do what's right. Um, 101 blog, Matt goes Hasselblad. Mm, having just sold both digital and film Hasselblads, unlikely. Um, well, I love that you're all guessing when I don't even know, so please do keep guessing. Let me know. What am I going to do? <laughs> um, let's jump back and take a look at some pictures, and we'll choose out some winners, and then you can tell me what I should be doing with my gear. Sanket now. Um, so Statue of Liberty. Okay, so if it weren't for the cash and the chase reflected in the window, I wouldn't have got that the Statue of Liberty is getting cash here. He's at an ATM. Um, so I think uh, stepping back and to the left, you would get a better vantage point of that. Then over the shoulder, you would see the money and maybe he could have skimmed his pin number. That would also be good. Her, sorry, Lady Liberty. You got to refer to someone by how they're dressed. Steph? Uh, is this like a bank robbery going on? I'm so confused. Is that a bag on the floor? Like, what is happening? I feel like I need more for this behind the scenes photo. Like, what? <laughs> Um, like, let us know more, Sanket. Uh, <laughs> Tom Harvey. So, from memory, this was wandering the streets of Japan. Obviously, he's a Japanophile by the looks of his tattoo on his leg there. Um, but the signs also look like Hong Kong. Uh, I don't know. And the doors look like Hong Kong as well. Maybe I got confused. Um, the pajamas scream. No, no, I'll skip that. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, without being too focused on technical things over emotion, the focus is in the background on the gate on the far left, not it, whereas it would be better if it's on the, the two people down on the ground. But, you know, this is a nice little inception of them both taking selfies. Look at who I met and showing their friends. He's saying, I just met this lady in her pajamas sitting on the street. And she's saying, I just met this guy covered in tattoos wearing an artist's cap. And then the, the woman's just making fun of them both. And someone else is taking a shot to make fun of everyone. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, I think it's good. It is one where it's so noticeably out of focus on the two main subjects' faces that I think it's a bit jarring, but it's a funny, candid shot. Um, and for me, someone sitting in their pajamas next to an empty, what looks like a trash can on the right, kind of adds to the, the humor a little bit. Um, <laughs> Those PJs look very comfortable, though. <laughs> Steph's house is going to turn into one giant sofa within, within a couple of years, I think. Oh my gosh, yeah. That would be amazing. 
I would just want one room that's this like memory foam everywhere. I Wait, heard a long time ago. I'm kind of messed up. <laughs> I think Bill Gates has a trampoline room. You could probably just pad that up with some foam and that would work. So, Vlad has a shot here. It looks like it's inside a temple or a church or a museum. Um, one twentieth of a second. Must have been super dark in there. Um, what are you shooting with? Hmm. <coughs> I don't know. I would like to, not knowing what's in the scene, I would like to either see what's hanging above him with those little medallions or more likely frame it down and get rid of them to have what's right near him in the frames because that's more likely to be in focus. Um, we kind of get a hint of both of them, but not really a clear sense of what they are though. And that was taken just this year, a couple of months back. Oh no, a couple of days back. What do you think, Steph? Oh, got that contemplating look where it's like, it's almost there, but not quite. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Agreed. Weiss has a little kitty cat. Now, <laughs> is this behind the scenes? For me, this I is kind of so. the action. This is the cat. The behind the scenes is the, well, they sleep, they stretch, they're cute, they eat, they use the bathroom. That's kind of, well, and they go crazy for like 20 minutes a day. That's kind of their life. So this, to me, feels like the main attraction, the cute period, rather than the behind mm -hmm. the scenes. But it is cute. Yeah. So thank you for sending it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wim Wilms. So another makeup one. This is what I meant that if you have the hand right over the face, it is kind of, it kind of blocks. Um, and here you've actually got the body of the makeup artist over them as well. So the makeup artist actually dominates the frame because they are occupying more of the space. If it's a shot for both of them or for the makeup artist, then that is fine. If it's meant to be about the person having their makeup done, just changing the crop so that it puts the balance onto your subject, there now they're centered, um, I think works better. Uh, so what do yeah, you... I can't tell if the photo is like overblown or she has like perfect skin. Like, did you like edit her skin? Like, I thought she was getting her makeup done and she looks great already. Like, she's just ready to go. Uh, well, may... often in my experience, um, <laughs> lipstick is one of the last steps. So she probably does already have her face on and this is right near the end. I think she does have a full face of makeup. Um, but yes, looking lovely. And I think yeah. that is our lucky last one. So let's take a look at our rated images and choose out a couple of winners. Um, I think we have two prizes to give away this week. Come on, what are you doing? Why do you not want to show me the images I'm asking you to see? One star, there we go. So, okay. For me, I would go with the first two. Dennis and Jeff. Did you want to bring the last two, Jeremy or Michael Cobb? So that's the women fixing their makeup in the blue parade or the first makeup artist, Jeremy's shot in? Uh, I see you... Jeremy. Oh, that's so hard. Okay, so that yeah. makes it three. So Jeremy... Jeff and Dennis, congrats. We'll be in touch and get you out a prize of your choice from the ones that we had on offer this week. Um, so let's take a look at a few last questions. Get your reflections in next week. Yes, <laughs> please do. Um, Chris Dellinger, I'm not sure what your question is, I'm sorry. Um, did I miss any questions, Juan? Um, Edward C, do you have any recommendation for cheap light shapers? I just filmed something where I used a pizza box lid and made one, so we'll have that out before too long. Uh, you can 
yeah, they're easy to make. They're easy to make and there's a lot of options out there that are reasonably inexpensive. It's just you want to put the time or a little bit of money into it. Um, so let me know, folks, if you have one or two more questions for me or Steph. Otherwise, we will wrap it out there. Reminder, next week is Reflections. It's going to be on the Saturday, not the Friday. We might have a special guest for the show. Um, the sales for Implied Behind the Photo and Start to Finish are ending this weekend. I think that's pretty much all the news that we had. And if you haven't seen the, the video about selling off my Nikon gear, then I'm sure it's in the chat there somewhere. Um, did you spot any other questions we needed to catch, Steph? Uh, no, I don't think I saw any. Uh, cardboard boxes in general are good for lighting. That's true 101. They're also good for cats. Um, I think that might be it then. Um, yeah. So thank you all. Thank you, Steph. Uh, we will see you next Saturday and stay tuned. I've got a couple of fun videos coming next week. Hopefully less controversial than the Nikon one. Um, <laughs> yeah, hope you guys all have a great weekend and get out and shoot. Use the gear you have. Don't let it sit in the cupboard gathering dust like I did up until last week. Cheers, guys. That's my dinner. <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys.